Hi there folks, my name's Peter Ward and I'm the Chief Technical Architect for Wardy IT Solutions. Wardy IT Solutions is Australia's leading SQL Server consultants, trainers and business intelligence specialists. In today's presentation we're going to be looking at how we can go and create a end-to-end -end reporting and analytical solution using SQL Server 2008 R2. Now the data set in question today that we're going to be looking at is we're going to be looking at a data set that's made available by the Australian Government and by a department known as the Incontinence Society. Now incontinence is obviously a very serious issue and we're certainly not making fun of it but it's just an interesting data set because the data set contains locational based information around all of the toilets that are located around Australia because what we want to do in today's demonstration is look at how we can visualise that information. So we want to be able to search around a particular radius and see all of the toilets in that around that location. What we also then want to be able to do is do some analysis and see are there particular suburbs or particular states that have a higher density density of toilets. Now this data set has come from the website data.gov.au so there's a number of other different data sets available on that site should you wish to do some further analytics and it's a great demo data set. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do in the presentation is we're going to go and take the XML file that we've already downloaded off the website and we're going to integrate that using SQL Server Integration Services. So let's go and create a new project here. call it toilet data and you'll see that we're going to select an integration services project here and we're going to hit OK. So what's going to happen here is we're going to go and create a stub inside of Solution Explorer for our integration services package. Now what we're going to do is a very very simple data flow so we're going to take data from a data source and then pump that into a destination. So what you'll see here is a number of control flow items listed down in our toolbox on the left hand side. So what we're going to do is grab our data flow task and drag that on our, to our design time surface here. So once we've dragged that particular data flow task in there, we can then go and double click on that data flow and you'll see that this is where we go and define where our source and where our destination is. So you'll see the first thing that we do is we grab our XML source. We're using an XML source because it's an XML file that we're loading up here. But you'll see listed down under our data flow sources that basically we can grab anything that we can get a connection to. So that allows us to go and get both ADO.NET sources as well as OLADB sources. So whether you've got a database that's MySQL or Oracle or SQL Server, it really doesn't matter. Or even if it's something as simple as a text file, we can go and consume that inside of integration services. So you'll see that I've got the red cross there on my XML source. Now the reason I've got my XML, the uh, reason I've got the cross there on my XML source is because I haven't gone and set all the mandatory information. In other words, I haven't said where am I going to get the data that I'm going to use in this XML file. So let's go and double click there. You'll see that I select my XML location. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go to ctemp slash demo, grab that and browse. Okay, so there's my XML file listed there. So you'll see this XML file is a decent size, it's 23 meg. What I'm going to do here is just double click on that. Now with an XML file I've got a couple of options. So I can use a schema to define and describe the information that's stored inside of that file. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to generate the XSD. So by generating the XSD what it's going to do is it's going to inspect my XML file and then go and generate a schema for me. So by doing that what you'll now see is I can then go and select my columns. Now I'm expecting to get this error here. Now the reason we're expecting to get this error is because one of the fields doesn't meet the definition that's been generated inside of the XSD. And we'll show how we can go and deal with errors like this a little bit later in the presentation. So I'm just going to hit OK. And now you'll see that all of our columns that have then been defined and the outputs because we've got multiple data sets inside of this XML file. We've got general details, accessibility details, details as well as toilet details stored inside of this particular file. So I'm going to hit OK. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go and just rename this. So it's a really good practice to get into is rather than just simply leaving XML source, what we might say is actually we might go and say toilet XML file. Okay. That way when somebody's coming and debugging this a little bit later, it makes it easier for them. And on that note, one of the things that we can do is we can add annotations here. So the annotations allows us to add comments throughout our integration services package. So what I'm going to do here is data came from okay. 
<laughs> so just a simple little comment so that people know exactly what's going on. So once again, make it easier to debug down the track. Because often when you're working with an integration services project, it may be six or 12 months between when you actually initially create it and when you need to go back and modify it again. And also it just makes it easy for anyone else in your team that then needs to then manage and update this package over time. So the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to go and add a data flow destination. Now the data flow destination is where our data is going to be loaded. In this case I'm going to select a SQL Server destination and I'm going to load this data into SQL Server. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to wire these two up here. So what I'm going to do there is sort of create a data flow between them. But I need to actually then go and select what the output of the file is, remembering when I showed earlier that we could possibly have multiple data sets inside of our XML file. So I'm going to go and select the toilet details and hit OK. Now what you'll see here is I've still got my red cross on my SQL Server destination and that's because I haven't defined which SQL Server instance that I'm going to go and load this information into. Now before we do this, I just want to flick across to SQL Server Management Studio. Now the reason I want to show Management Studio here is just to show you that there's nothing here, there's no table I prepared earlier. So I'm going to create this from scratch. So you see that I've got my database there called Power BI and there's no tables listed inside that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to flick back inside of uh, Business Intelligence Development Studio and I'm going to create a connection here. So new connection. You'll see that I've already got one here for Power BI that I'm going to select. And now what I'm going to do is use a table or a view. So you'll see that when I go and select the drop down list here that I don't have anything to select because I don't have any existing tables. So what I can do is I can click on new. When I click on new, what that's going to do is it's going to inspect the output of the XML file and it's going to then generate a table for us based upon what it believes is the appropriate data types. Now rather than calling it SQL destination, I'm just going to call it toilets and hit OK. Now what you'll see here is I've then got the ability to go and create a mapping. So the mapping says, look, I've got a source table and I've got a destination table. What fields do I want to map up? So for example, I can go and delete that mapping if I don't want to bring that table in. Or likewise, I could go and map that to another column if I wanted to. So let's just hit OK. Now before we ex execute our package today, what we want to do is we want to go and modify our error handling. Remember we saw that error early in the piece? Well, What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to my data source here and I'm just going to double click on it and what you'll see here is I've got my error output and you'll see that I've got an error output for all of my data sets here. Now where I've got the issue here is I've gone and got a, a field here called notes and it's actually got more than 255 characters in there which is the reason that it's failed. So look, we already know that but what we can choose to do is we can choose to ignore that failure. So what that means is rather than failing the entire package we'll load everything that we can and ignore those particular records. We've got the ability to pipe those out somewhere else so that we can then manage that later in our pipeline. But what we're now going to do is we're going to execute our package. So in order to execute our package, we're just going to right click here inside of Solution Explorer and select Execute Package. Now what you'll see here is that we've got yellow while we're actually in progress and then green once we've got success and then it would be red if we had an issue. It's the standard traffic light scenario where green is good, orange we're actually in the middle of something or some corrective action required and red we've got a problem here. So what we've gone and done is we've gone and loaded those 16,000 odd records into our table. So I'm just going to click on stop now just to come back out of back into debug mode. And now if I flick back across to Management Studio, what you'll see is if I refresh my tables, you'll see that now I have my toilets table here. So I can right click on that toilets and I can go and now select the top 1,000 records in there. Now what that's going to do is go and show me the information that I've loaded into this table. Now what you'll see here is here's all the data. I've got latitude and longitudinal information about where the toilet is located. I've also then got some name and address information listed down here. But what I do need to do with this data is I need to go and add a geography data type. So the latitude and longitude information needs to be going created as a point in space. Now in order to go and store the point inside of my table, I'm going to go and add the geography data type and it's going to be called geog. So let's go and alter the table. Now that I've modified the table, what I'm going to do is I'm going to update that new column that I've added to with the table with my point. So that I get my point from taking the latitude and longitudinal information and then determining that point in space. 
Now, by doing that, what it allows me to do is it allows me to go and create calculations that show me all of the toilets from a particular radius. So Central Railway Station is next to the office, so what we've done here is I've gone and written a query that's going to go and show us all of the toilets that are within a one kilometre radius of Central Railway Station. So now that we've done that, what we're going to do is we're going to look at how we can go and take all of this information that we've loaded up from our XML file and how we can go and create some reporting and analytical solutions based off this. In order to do that, what we're going to do is use a tool that's called Report Builder. Now, Report Builder is a click-once deployed application that's available as part of reporting services.